persons in this church, for you all and also for us. So please follow the guidelines and sit where you're supposed to and do what you're supposed to, please. If you're staying outside of the church, you need to keep your social distance. After the funeral is ended, we are asking that only the family follow the casket, everybody else use the side entrances. If you need to view again, you form a, a line, socially distance, and come through the door that you enter.
How do I say goodbye to what we had? The good time that made us laugh, I'm with the man. I thought we. Forever gone away. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know where this road is going. And I'll take with me the memories to be my sunshine after the rain. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. And I'll take. Though I'm missing you.
How do I say goodbye to what we had? The good time that made us laugh, I'll wait them back. I thought we get. So hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know where the road is going to lead. All I know. And I'll take with me the memories to be my sunshine after the rain. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. And I'll take. Though I'm missing you Located in our hall, 
my left, your right, you'll see the whole sign and the washrooms are inside of there. In the event of an emergency, please lend a hand to those in need of assistance. At this time, we ask you to either put your cell phones on vibrate or turn them off. Our COVID-19 protocols are in place. All persons are seated inside of the church and all persons outside on our compound are required to socially distance and to cover their nose and mouth with their masks. Must cover nose and mouth at all times while on these premises. As I said earlier on, after the service, when the priest exits with the coffin, we ask that only family members follow. All other persons are to use our exits, which are the boat exits, and if you desire to come back into beauty body, then you will proceed the way you came in, socially distanced, and exit via the two side doors. Thank you.
he was always the one to reassure me that he loved me then back at it again the next day. Like it had this one time, I randomly took his phone, I went to the messages with him and mommy. One day, I randomly said, what's for lunch? Dal, rice, curry chicken, and a portion of sex. <laughs> he looked at me and he was like, what's wrong with you? Why would you read your parents' messages? I feel so grateful that we spent so much time together. I hear that I didn't put in the effort that I should have at the end. If you can hear me now, please forgive me, and I love you always and forever. There is no one that can take your place. Knowing my father, he won't want a sad eulogy. So I can safely say, it was mommy who posted, I shut myself by Jimmy on his, on his WhatsApp status. Only time in Tobago, but we posted on the status as well. I'm having a lovely time with my boyfriend, but my wife is here. I was really looking forward for you to be picking up Carly from school. She was his eyeball. I knew he loved us all. Everyone can agree that my father was definitely an entertainer. When you saw him, he, his energy was always happy, laughing, smiling, you know. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit as we listen to the first reading. Person doing the reading, please come up. Over here. You see a reading from the Revelation of John, chapter, what's that, 21, 2 to 7. And when you come to the end, you pause and you say the word of the Lord. A reading from the Revelation to John, chapter 21, 2 to 7. As I saw the holy city, the the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. As I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. 
thanks be to God. Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I am the good 
good shepherd, says Jesus. And the psalm that we heard so beautifully rendered just now, Psalm 23, composed by David, a beloved son of God, embraces for us what came long after in uh, this gospel passage where Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd. And for, for us who mourn those who have died, and for you today, as you grieve for your lost one, these words are here to comfort. These words are here to reassure us that the God who loves us so much, God the Father, who created you, created me, created all that is, loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, his one and only son. It is unbelievable, it's unimaginable that God Almighty would put on human flesh to come into the world that he created. Unimaginable. And yes, we're in this Advent season of preparing. We have our crush up that reminds us of Jesus' birth and the little ones, perhaps if I already had a little look at it. Christmas time reminds us of God's love for us. And I'm, I'm stressing it, especially now as you grieve, as you miss Anselm, I see his nickname is Slim, as you miss him, as you grieve that he's not here, that you can listen to this passage and hear God speaking to you personally. I am your good shepherd. I love you. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. That's what Jesus says. Just as I know the Father. Just as you knew Anselm personally. God is saying the same thing. We might say, well, I don't really think I know God so well. I don't really think I have any kind of personal relationship with God. Well, that's no problem. Because he's always ready and willing to hear. To hear us reach out to him. Like today. Lord, I am hurting. Lord, why did he have to go now? You might have questions and questions. And you can ask all the questions. And as I say to the men, and I say to the particularly the, the young younger men who have been brought up, men don't cry. I'm saying cry your hearts out. Do not keep it inside and get sick. I say the same things for the ladies. Let the pain and the hurt of his death come out of you so God can come in and heal your pain. How do we know that this is a loving shepherd? Because Jesus said, I am not like a hired hand. I'm not going to run away when there is danger. So when you're in danger, when you're in pain, I'm not leaving you. I am with you. Just call on me. Just ask me to make myself um, present to you. Make me aware that you are around. That's all we have to do. There's no big kneeling down at the altar, falling down on the ground. All those things can happen. But we have to listen. As we cry out to him, we too have to listen. And I'm praying that you bring up your children to learn to listen to God as well. Learn to pray. Learn to trust that he's there for them. Children are more open, more open to receive. And as you might be familiar, Jesus says, let the little children come to me. And that's our responsibility as the adults, to let the children, young in faith, and young in age, learn to come to the Good Shepherd. And if you haven't had that experience recently, or drifted away as we do from time to time, let today's service be a reunion. Let today's service be 
be a reigniting of the flame that God wants to have in all of our hearts. Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus came, he preached, he taught, he healed the sick, he cast out demons, and at the appropriate time, Jesus went to the cross. A sinless man took on our sins and died an excruciating, torturous death because of the love he had for the Father and because of the love that the Father has to bring us all back to him. At a time when we need to hear words of hope and encouragement, I offer these words to you. Words of hope, words of encouragement. That the God who created you, created all of us, is a God of love. A God who is always with us. And in your pain today, in your grief, he is here. I will never leave you or forsake you. And when we allow him to embrace us in the midst of that, we will feel, we will experience a peace. We will experience something different. So trust me, try it, and you might have already been doing so. In the eulogy, I heard a little bit about um, being able to discuss things and to um, have disagreements and to make up and to ask for forgiveness and to receive it. And that's the same thing that we do with God. We mess up, we go to him and ask forgiveness and he forgives. And so I'm saying also that if you feel that there's anything that's keeping you apart from going to Jesus, just ask his forgiveness and he promises to forgive. So Jesus continues in this passage. I must bring those, that's the other sheep, and they will listen to my voice. So there'll be one flock and one shepherd. His desire is for all humanity to be as one. And to be able to do that, we have to recognize his voice. To recognize his voice can happen in a number of ways. One of the main ways is to be quiet, to be silent so that we can listen. And then we can read. We can listen to music and be informed. We can hear him speak to us in a number of different ways. So today, brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you to put your focus on the Good Shepherd, knowing that he is here for you and he is there for Anselm, who heard his voice, who responded to the voice and is back with his maker. And we thank God that we can have a service here that will help us to release him back to his maker and father. The Lord be with you. Stand. Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. It's on the screen. I should have reminded you to look on the screen and you can join in. We'll start again. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue with our intercession, the responses again are on the screen. And I will say at the end of each petition, Lord, in your mercy, and you will respond here our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who mourn for Anselm that they will be comforted. We commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened by our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we share with them in your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Anselm, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the, whole, with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Anselm and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. We will now have this singing of the offertory hymn, Walking Up the King's Highway. And we ask for two volunteers to go to the front of the church to collect the baskets. You may sit while we sing this hymn. Two volunteers, please go to the front to collect the baskets as we sing the offertory hymn, Walking Up the King's Highway. We have two persons.
stay, stay there. Father, we give you thanks for this offering. We ask you to bless it, Lord God, and let it be used for your honor and glory. Through Christ we pray. Amen. servant and slam with your saints. The response is on the screen. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sigh, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest to Christ, to your servant, and slam with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us commend our brother Anselm to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Anselm, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Anselm. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Into paradise may the angels lead you, Anselm. At your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. 
Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our brother Anselm, and we commit his body to the elements. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Anselm and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for those who are bereaved. Grant, O oh Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all, by whose mercy and grace your saints remain in everlasting light and peace, we remember with thanksgiving those we love but see no longer. And we pray that in them your perfect will for them may be fulfilled through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear, Lord, the prayers of your people, as we remember before you, Slim, our brother, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with him be made perfect in the kingdom of your glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. And to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. As we get ready to sing the recessional hymn, just want to remind you of the notice given at the beginning of the service. When the casket is being led down the aisle, the immediate family may follow. And we ask the other members of the congregation to use the exit. And if you want to come in to view the body, we come in from the front door, socially distanced, come down and use either aisle. Why? Because we want to keep ourselves and our friends safe. Is that clear, everyone? And if you haven't sanitized, please do so again. Let us sing, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder.
And I'll take